Lovers, welcome to Railways Explained. Today we're up for another mega railway project whose construction has just begun. This future longest timorous tunnel in the world known as Femern Belt Fixed Link aims to connect the cities of Stockholm, Copenhagen, Hamburg and Berlin, but also to fill the gap in the Central European Corridor. To show a full picture of this project, we will start with a geography lesson, which will help us understand the interesting position of this tunnel and the importance which is inextricably linked to this position. This is Denmark. Denmark is a country consisting of a Jutland Peninsula, through which it has a land border with Germany, and an archipelago of 443 islands, with the largest being Zealand, Funen, North Atlantic Island and the Laland. Continental part of Europe, i.e. Peninsula Jutland, is connected by the Great Belt Fixed Link in the form of 6.79 km long railroad combined bridge with the island of Zealand on which the Copenhagen, capital of Denmark, is located. One part of the Copenhagen is located on the nearby Emma Island. Further, Copenhagen is linked with Malmo in Sweden by the Øresund Bridge. This bridge is the longest combined road and rail bridge in Europe, running nearly 8 km from the Swedish coast to the artificial island of Piberholm in the middle of the strait. The crossing is completed by the 4 km Drogden Tunnel from Piberholm to Amma. The stories behind these bridges are something that will also find a place on our channel in near future. Next, Zealand is connected by a tunnel and bridges with Laland via the island of Felstam. Next to the Laland is the German island of Famarn, which is connected to the mainland of Germany by Famarn Sound Bridge. As you can see, there is the gap between Laland and Famarn. The construction of the Famarn Belt fixed link will enable a connection between these two islands, which in turn will enable a shortened and more direct road and rail route from Hamburg to Copenhagen and further to cities in Sweden and Norway comprising a four-lane motorway and two electrified rail tracks. But, in accordance with the initial proposal, it was supposed to be a bridge and not a tunnel, just like the Great Belt Bridge and Iresund Bridge, but let's see what happened in the meantime. The idea of connecting these two islands is several decades old. Various feasibility studies were done in the late 90s and early 2000s. In all these cases, German and Danish engineers preferred a cable state bridge as a technical solution that would carry a four-lane highway and two electrified rail tracks. Bearing in mind it has been for a long time been considered feasible and justified, conceptual designs and detailed plans have also been developed. The concept designs for the main bridge includes a twin cable state bridge with three pylons and two main spans of 724 meters each. The pylons cast in concrete that carry the main bridge should be 280 meters tall. The bridge was supposed to be about 65 meters above the sea level. This concept has been recognized as the most advantageous with respect to functional, operational, economic and aesthetic aspects. However, in the late 2010, after further feasibility studies, the Danish project planners decided that an immersed tunnel is better solution. This decision has been taken having in mind the technical risks during construction, environmental protection, implications on shipping in this vital sea channel and construction costs. For example, according to the German Nature Protection Society, the bridge would obstruct 90 million migratory birds each year and damage the ecosystem of the Baltic. Anyway, since the tunnel was eventually chosen and adopted as the final solution by both the Danish and German governments, let's talk about the scope of the project. Femern Belt Link is an immersed tunnel that will be the longest ever constructed of that kind, with a length of about 18 km. It will surpass the 13.5 km Marmaray Tunnel in the Bosphorus, which was also covered in one of the first videos on the Railways Explained. The tunnel route passes east of Put Garden, crosses Femern Belt in a soft curve and reaches Laland east of Ridby Haven. On the screen you can see the longitudinal profile showing the depth beneath the sea surface. Bearing in mind it is an immersed tunnel, this means that the tailor-made elements of this tunnel are immersed in a trench that is excavated at the bottom of the sea, and then assembled as Lego bricks section by section to form the tunnel. The trench for this tunnel will be up to 60 meters wide, 16 meters deep, and, as we said, about 18 kilometers long. In total, by the end of the construction, some 19 million cubic meters of stone and sand will be excavated from the seabed. 
The two road tubes in the standard elements are approximately 11 meters wide and are located on the west side of the tunnel. Each road tube contains two traffic lanes, one emergency lane, marginal strips and a step barrier along the walls. A central gallery approximately 2 meters wide is located between the two road tubes. This gallery is used for drainage sumps and water supply pipes, fire suppression system, a space for maintenance staff and the place of temporary refuge in the event of an evacuation from one road tube to the other. Two railway tubes, each with a width of approximately 6 meters, are located on the eastern side of the tunnel. The dimensions of the railway tubes are such that the trains will be able to pass safely at speeds up to 200 km per hour. Also, there are 10 special elements along the tunnel, approximately at every 2 kilometers. Each special element is unique and cannot be interchanged with other elements. These special elements penetrate deeper into the ground in order to house a lower level for mechanical equipment rooms such as pumps and transformers. At the same time, in this way, the maintenance staff gets access to all road and rail tubes regardless of traffic situation. This means that the Femern Belt Tunnel will be cheaper and easier to maintain and will require significantly less concrete since the standard elements can be made smaller. Once a tunnel element has been installed on the foundation bed, it is necessary to backfill the trench with suitable materials and to provide a protection layer of approximately 1.2 meters on top. When the tunnel tube is in place, the technical installations can be completed. These include tracks for the trains, communication systems, lighting, ventilation, transformers and pumps. In order to shorten the production period and reduce the complexity of logistics, a special factory was built with only one task – to provide the tunnel elements in Ridby Heaven. The casting hole of the factory is located with direct access to the upper shallow section of the launching basin, of which the deeper section has access to the Femern belt via a floating gate. Once a complete tunnel element has been produced, it is pushed the last part of the way into the shallow part of the launching basin, where watertight bulkheads are mounted at each end of the element. The basin is then cut off from the production area by a sliding gate and from the sea by a floating gate. Another reason why Ridby Haven was decided to be the sole production site for the tunnel elements is the EU Environmental Impact Assessments Directive which states that environmental impact assessments must be carried out not only for the project itself, but also for the production site. This would have required additional planning and approval procedures, and in consequence would have resulted in delays. In addition to the tunnel, the project also includes a number of infrastructure improvements that will be made on land in both the Germany and Denmark. This includes the construction of a new motorway and railway line to access the tunnel. For example, on Femern Island, the new four-lane motorway and new electrified double-track railway will be constructed, in the length of about 3.5 km south of the tunnel port. It will ultimately be connected to a future upgrade of the motorway and railway lines leading onto the German mainland. As for the island of Laland, the new four-lane motorway and new electrified double-track railway will also be constructed, for approximately 4.5 km north of the portal building that will be connected to a future upgrade of the motorway and railway lines leading into the Danish hinterland. In addition, several other facilities will also be built – secondary structures, customs areas, portal buildings, ramp area on Laland and a toll station. Ok, now when we have shown the scope of the project, let's see how it is institutionally resolved between Denmark and Germany, who and how is financing this project, and after the completion, who and how will manage the fixed link. The Danish and German governments have concluded a so-called state treaty on the delivery of the fixed belt link which was signed in September 2008, entered into force in January 2010. As simple as we can put it, according to the state treaty, the Kingdom of Denmark has the sole responsibility for the construction and financing of the hinterland connections in the Kingdom of Denmark, and Germany has the sole responsibility for the connections in the Federal Republic of Germany. In Denmark, the Parliament adopted the National Bill on the Act of Project Planning for a Fixed Link over the Femern Belt with associated land facilities in Denmark, in March 2009. In April 2009, the Queen of Denmark gave her royal assent to this act. In the same month, Denmark passed a law authorizing company Femern AS to carry out preparatory work studies and design for a Femern Belt Fixed Link. On 28 April 2015, the Act on the Construction and Operation of a Fixed Link across the Femern Belt with Associated Landworks in Denmark was adopted by the Danish Parliament. 
The Femernveld link is planned to be built according to the Danish state guarantee model, which also financed the fixed links across Iresund and Storbelt. The model is based on state guaranteed loans, which will be repaid using revenue from users of the tunnel, i.e. toll collection from the road and track access charges from the railways. German participation is limited to the development of the land-based facilities on the German side. The current investment value of the project is about 7.1 billion euros. Estimated period of repayment is 36 years, including upgrades to the railway between Riksted and Ridby, which will also be funded by the profit from the tunnel. In addition to user payment, the project receives co-financing from the EU in the form of grant funds within the framework of the Trans-European Transport Networks Programme. The Femern Belt railway line is the central section of the railway axis Femern Belt, which is Priority Project 20 of the Trans-European Transport Network. It occupies a very important position along the multimodal Scandinavian Mediterranean Corridor. Tenders for works are defined in four contracts, depending on the seabed and land reclamation, construction of the northern section of the tunnel, construction of the southern section of the tunnel, and construction of portals, ramps and shore facilities. The analysis of the preliminary bids in December 2014 and the subsequent dialogue with the contractors indicated that the earlier assumption of six and a half year construction period was ambitious and contributory factor to high costs of the bids. As a major element of reducing the bid prices, the construction period was therefore extended to eight and a half years. In 2016, conditional civil works contracts worth 4 billion euros were concluded with two major international contractor consortia consisting of Danish, German, French and Dutch companies. The contracts encompass approximately 75% of the construction. You may now wonder why conditional. Well, at the time, Germany has not yet finally approved this project. Second, although the European Commission first approved the funding approach in July 2015, after confirming that no state aid was used on the scheme, this decision was appealed by ferry operators Scand Lines and Stana Line that operates on Femern Strait. This appeal resulted in the 2015 decision being annulled in December 2018, after which it was found that the Commission should have carried out a formal investigation under EU state aid rules. The investigation was launched in 2019 and in 2020 has confirmed that the capital injections, the state guarantees on loans and the state loans granted by Denmark to project developer Femern AS are in line with EU state aid rules. Also, in total, four years passed in the process of final approval of this project from both the German and Danish sides. Therefore, in January 2021, construction works began on the tunnel element production site as well as at the gantry and ramps on the Danish side of the Femern Belt in the town of Ridby. Due to the confinement measures taken because of the pandemic, the groundbreaking ceremony took place virtually. The current estimate is that the works will last until 2029. In this chapter, we will not, as we usually do, only discuss the data from different predictions and studies relating to the project. Instead, bearing in mind that in this case we are speaking about completely new, missing physical link that will be built, we will put our emphasis on exactly this, the appearance of completely new transport flaws and travel possibilities. As you might guess, the change in traffic patterns that will occur will be quite significant, and flexibility for travelers will drastically increase. Let's mention only a few facts and figures. The current ferry journey between the two islands is 45 minutes. After the completion of the Femern Tunnel, the train journey will require only 7 minutes and car journey no more than 10. The duration of a train journey between Hamburg and Copenhagen is expected to be about 3 hours compared to 4.5, which is the case today. This also includes replacement of the narrow Femern Sound Bridge by new Femern Sound Tunnel with a four-lane motorway and double-track railway as extension towards mainland Germany. With the construction of the Femern Belt, train travel between Scandinavia and continental Europe will be shortened by about 160 km. This, of course, means shorter transit times and lower costs for railway operators and therefore new opportunities to shift significant amounts of cargo to rail. Let's also have a look at the examples of other fixed links that were built in this area. Experiences from opening the fixed links across the Great Belt and Iresund in 1998 and 2000 show the traffic volumes grew considerably when ferry crossings were replaced by these new bridges. In the first years following the opening of the Iresund fixed link, total traffic across Iresund increased by over 
while the opening of the Great Belt Link resulted in 127% increase. We must also point out that the rail ferries stopped operating immediately after the Iresund Bridge opened. What is estimated in the studies is that after the opening of the Femron Tunnel, 25% of traffic will be diverted from the Great Belt Bridge, while much of the traffic will be shifted from the existing ferry links. To put it differently, there will be a shift from sea to rail, and yes, also from sea to road on this 18 km distance. There's much more to be said about the traffic effects of this project, because the Femern Belt Fixed Link will provide much better physical and more efficient integration of the regions of Northern Germany and Scandinavia. But we'll leave that part for another video on Railways Explained. For the end, let's conclude this hopefully interesting video with the words that we will, as we always do, closely monitor the implementation of this project until scheduled 2029. Remember that on our Patreon page we are planning to publish comprehensive posts whenever something important happens regarding all mega projects that we are covering on Railways Explained. So stay tuned and consider supporting Railways Explained on Patreon. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your rail-loving friends and of course subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, goodbye.